Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and into my home. If you're new here, my name is Michelle and my channel is about reclaiming peace in your life through cleaning, organizing, and setting up routines. Now, in last Thursday's video, I shared with you my favorite cleaning products. After an admitted addiction to trying new products, I've gotten honest with myself about the amount of space that these products were taking up in my home. So, I kept what I used and loved, and I passed on to my daughters everything else. Y'all liked that video, and I got quite a few comments and questions on my favorite cleaning tools and how I keep them clean. So this video is all about my favorite cleaning tools and how I clean and care for them. Did you know that a microfiber cloth isn't a terry cloth, but most are made of recycled plastics? These are very fine synthetic fibers that are typically polyester nylon blends. These millions of fibers lift and hold tightly to dirt, grease, grime, liquids, and bacteria. These fibers include both positive charged polyester fibers and negative charged nylon fibers that actually attract and pull up whatever is on the surface you're cleaning. My granite countertops appear to be a flat surface, but in reality, they have microscopic cracks and divots throughout. Food, grease, and bacteria settle into these fine cracks, making them a breeding ground for bacteria. Microfiber cloths have the ability to draw out that bacteria, grease, and grime, all with only using water. After you wipe down the area, you can shine it by using a polishing cloth. Now, if you're like me, you might want to go back over your granite with a polish, and that is fine. You now have a bacteria grime-free surface to apply your polish on. Some microfiber manufacturers, like eCloth, have developed products with fiber specifically designated for a task, like scrubbing floors, which I'll show you here in a bit, and for dusting, cleaning hard surfaces throughout the house, and for glass and stainless steel. Personally, I designate a specific colored microfiber for each of my favorite cleaning products. That way, I'm not mixing products on my cloth. When you invest in a good microfiber cloth, you're investing in a cloth that has 90,000 to 225,000 fibers per square inch. Now, when these are cared for properly, they will last you up to 500 washes. That's about two years of regular use. Now, this is how I clean my cloths, but always check with your manufacturer of your cloth. First, before I wash any of these cloths, I like to pre-soak them in warm, soapy water. I use a teaspoon of original powder Tide. Now, you want a soap that doesn't have bleach or fabric softener in it. What I'm wanting to do is remove any of the cleaning products, so that way I'm not washing all the products together in my washing machine. <music> All right, so now I'm gonna go take them into my washing machine. Now, you only wanna wash these with other microfiber cloths. Never ever wash them with towels or other clothes. These cloths are very powerful and they will pull the lint from the other materials, making it very difficult to remove out of these fibers. So, let's talk about the temperature of the water. I know the temptation is to give them a good wash in hot water, but these fibers are very sensitive to high heat 
and you will get less use of the cloth if you repeatedly wash in hot water. I use a warm water cycle with Tide soap. Now, you never want to add bleach, fabric softener, or scented beads. These things will for sure ruin your cloths. And when it's time to dry them, you can either throw them in a low heat dryer or you can do like I do and hang them to dry. Okay, so I'm gonna totally go against my caution of hot water, but on occasion, I will do a quick boil of very dirty cloths. Now you can tell when they're very dirty because they have a coating of product on them, especially these ones that I use to clean the stove top. They do a great job at lifting the grease and grime, so obviously they can hold on to the grease in their fibers. So I'll boil some water and I'll put in the cloth. And then I use a spoon to continuously agitate the water for about 90 seconds. Then I pull it out and allow it to cool. Then I'll go ahead and rinse and hang it to dry. Now I only have to do this every few months or so. Okay, so these are the scrub brushes that I use to do the dishes and for general cleaning. Even though these are used around soap and other cleaning products, they can get pretty daggum nasty. So the way that I like to clean these types of brushes, and by the way, you can also do this with your broom but I like to add some Dawn soap into very hot water, and then I allow the brushes to sit in the water for a few minutes to help loosen the particles. Then I use the brushes to clean each other. Once they are clean, I'll rinse them and I'll lay them out to dry. Now I know that others like to use the dishwasher, but I found that the high heat from the dishwasher isn't good for these types of bristles. And I also clean my bathroom brushes the same way. However, those are cleaned in the bathroom and they never get mixed with these. Ever since I was introduced to the Sponge Daddy products, I've grown very fond of them. The way that I clean this cute little face is I stick it in the dishwasher. Now, I don't use a heat dry cycle on my dishwasher, so I'm not worried that the sponge is gonna melt. Now, I also like to use regular sponges. However, it doesn't do any good to put these in the dishwasher to clean them. So, I don't invest in very expensive sponges, so that way I can replace them more often. A quick soap and rinse is good enough for these. I couldn't accomplish half of what I accomplish in a day without this little guy. We've named ours Manny because he's a very handsome guy that comes to help clean my home. Now, do you have a robot vacuum? And if you do, what did you name yours? We all know the ongoing issue that I have with pet fur in this house. My lab sheds like there is no tomorrow, and I also have a long-haired cat. Now, I have to empty this bin at least once a day, and the washable filter gets washed every few days. Other than that, I clean the hairs out of the rollers every few weeks. The deeper clean that you're seeing me do today, I do about every six months. I like to use a couple of brushes to clean my Roomba. I use a soft bristle brush to brush away any hair and dirt, and in a minute, you'll see me using a stiffer brush to get the areas that requires more. Now, 
Now, my husband just replaced this edge brush, but there is some tangled hair in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly remove it and then clean the brush. And here's the reason why I need that stiffer brush. Back here in the back roller is where all the dog fur gathers. My dog's fur is coarse and can quickly pierce through anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this butter knife and dislodge most of this. Now I could unscrew off all the covers and get inside, but I'm worried about either losing a screw or dislodging a wire. So I prefer just to do it this way. I hope that I'm giving you good tips on how to keep your cleaning tools in good working condition. I enjoy bringing these kind of videos to you. And if you're new here, I hope that you'll subscribe and join along. By the way, I'm giving away five Starbucks gift cards each month for a cup of coffee to my new subscribers for the month. This is my way of welcoming you to my channel. So now I'm just taking a damp microfiber cloth and I'm just wiping everything off. And you see this thing right here? It's the sensor that tells me when my bin is full. I like to try to clean this the best that I can. Underneath this chair in the dining room is where I keep the base of the Roomba. It is taped down with Velcro, so I'm heading under to wipe it down. Before I wipe everything down with a wet cloth, I go ahead and unplug it because I like to wipe the charging ports down along with the GPS sensor. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and continue cleaning out the dustbin and then I'll wipe it down with a microfiber cloth.
Okay, so now I'm going to finish up cleaning the Roomba by washing this washable filter. Now I do do this every couple of days. And I also have two of these, so that way I can rotate them out, giving the washed one time to dry. So who on here has a Dyson? And if so, how do you like your cordless vacuum? I personally love my Dyson. Once I got one and witnessed its performance, I felt comfortable passing on my upright vacuum. The real game changer for me was the lack of the cord. I also like that it folds down flat so that I can vacuum underneath low furniture. One charge of the battery lasts me enough to vacuum my whole house. Like with my Roomba, I have to wash this filter every couple of days. Now, unfortunately, I only have one of these, so I have to wash it and it has to dry about 24 hours before I can use it again. Once you figure out how to remove the dustbin, it can quickly be taken off and rinsed out. Now, from here on out, I won't use water to rinse anything else. I know that there's a way of to completely take this thing apart and wash it, but I'm not willing to run that risk. But I will use a damp microfiber cloth to wipe it down. Pointing out this little hole, you want to get in there and get that cleaned out every now and then because it does get clogged. Unfortunately, I don't have the camera angled very well, but you can see that I'm still brushing and it's releasing some very fine dust. Once I get this all wiped down, I go ahead and just set it up without putting everything together so that way everything can dry off. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and take out this beater bar and I'm going to cut out all the hair and the um, threads that get wrapped around it. Now I'm still very careful of what I'm going to be getting wet. 
I was told that anything that's purple on this vacuum can get wet, as in you can put it underneath water, and everything else should not get wet. However, I'm still very careful at what I get wet because I don't know if these are stainless steel screws that are in here, and if they get wet, are they going to rust? So I typically just use my um, microfiber cloth to wipe everything down. Here's one of those metal things that I was telling you that I don't want to get wet because I don't know if that would rust. This one here is the upholstery vacuum. It does have the little screw thing where you can take out this beater bar, but I have a very difficult time getting it out. So I go ahead and just use scissors and cut everything out. And with all these bristle attachments, I just go ahead and remove the fur and the dust the best that I can. This is the long tube of the vacuum and you really want to be careful here because those are connectors right in there that connect to the motor of the um, vacuum. So I'm very careful around this.
Okay, now I just leave everything here to dry. And like I said, it usually takes a full 24 hours for that filter to dry. This O Cedar Spin Mop has gained recent popularity because of its ability to give a deep clean of the traditional string mop without the mess of having to wring out that string mop. And the spinner assists in controlling the amount of water that you're using on your floor. So the mop head is microfiber and it can be used with only water. But you know me, I like to add in a little bit of Tide to my bucket water and on occasion I'll add a splash of bleach. The smell of cleaning products is the one thing that motivates me to clean. So that is the main reason why I continue to use cleaning products when really I only need to use water. As you can see, these microfiber heads are easy to remove and I just go ahead and throw it in the wash. Now on occasion when I see that it needs to be, I go ahead and replace it with a new one. Now once again, you only want to wash this with soap. Don't add fabric softener or the scent beads. And then when you go to dry it, just dry it flat. There's no need to put it in the dryer. And I do replace the head about every three months. I wash this part of the mop and the bucket with Dawn. In my opinion, Dawn is a miracle cleaner for most grimy things. So it's a staple cleaner underneath my kitchen sink. I should just go ahead and make a video on the things that I clean with the help of Dawn. Anyway, the bottom of the bucket can get pretty grimy after a while. This is even after I rinse it. I also store this in the garage so dust and cobwebs like to set up house in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and give everything a good scrub with a brush, hot water, and Dawn. I only take this piece off so that I can see the outside of the spinner when I clean it. I wish I could remove the spinner basket, but it's attached. I'm not showing it in this video, but I'm actually allowing that Dawn Power Wash to sit for a few minutes. That way it gives it time to work its miracle. Oftentimes we forget that in order for a cleaner to work, it needs its dwell time. When we rush that process, we're basically only using the cleaner for its scent because not enough time is given for the product to work the way that it was formulated. I purchased my e-cloth mop as a remedy to the daily mud and dirt that was being tracked in by my dog during the time that we were putting in the in-ground pool. It has some real power at picking up the dirt and not smearing it all around the floor as I mop. All you have to do is just add water, wring it out, and it will strip grease, grime, dirt, and over 99% of bacteria from all types of hardwood floor, like wood, tile, laminate, it cleans and it protects your investment just by using water. There's no need to add additional cleaners. However, I carry around a spray bottle with a mixture of powder tide and water just so that I can pre-treat the areas that I want to clean up quickly and because I like that smell that it leaves behind. I also have two separate cloths. One I use for all over my home and the other one is designated only for the bathrooms. We all know that my Dokapole is my buddy. In fact, it has become synonymous with my channel. 
I get asked about it often, and it is the most clicked on link down in my description box. This pole extends to 30 feet and has several different attachments that you can purchase. I'm gonna be showing you two here that I use the most of the three that I have. But they have attachments for everything from picking fruit, to putting in light bulbs, to washing your car, and so much more. This is the one that I use outside to get the cobwebs from underneath the eaves. I just rinse it off underneath the hose when I'm done. And this one is the workhorse. It's bendable so I can get it into shapes to clean my 10 foot high curtain rods. And I also bend it so that I can clean my tall ceiling fans. Whatever you need it for, you can use it. Anyways, I just remove the microfiber sleeve and throw it into the wash. But please remember, don't use fabric softener or bleach on it. And this is my newest cleaning gadget that I cannot live without. This is the heavy duty carpet rake. Now when buying one of these, be sure that you're looking for one that can withstand heavy duty use. I would look for one that has these metal attachments, both at the rake and at the pole. I just finger tighten the nuts every so often and I give the rake a good wash underneath the faucet. I just love the feeling of knowing that all of my tools are clean and in good shape. I say it all the time, the products that we buy nowadays, they're not made to last like they once were. So maintaining them is super important to prolong your investment. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, would you please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm leaving you with my favorite cleaning products video that is part one to this video. And I'll post a playlist to my cleaning routines video. They will give you everything that you need to know to start a good cleaning routine in your home. I look forward to seeing you in Sunday's video where I'm gonna be doing a Sunday reset of the home. I'll see you then. Stay blessed, my friends.